as are coming back to you, Laura's off the hook with this, but how are you picking that one CDK46 inhibitor over the other in your clinical practice in metastatic settings? I agree with exactly what Laura said. We're, w when that data came out uh, with the survival data that was statistically significant for ribocyclib, we changed our practice on Monday morning. I think a lot of people were slower because everyone was very comfortable prescribing palpocyclib, well-tolerated, minimal monitoring. Um, so I think it was a bit of a slow shift, but the next day, um, the, the Monday after that data was presented, we changed our practice. I think what's going to be interesting is now that we're giving these agents rivocyclib and abemocyclib in the curative intense setting in very high risk patients, what are we going to do in the first line metastatic setting? And that's our next challenge. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Especially now that we're seeing these oral steroids also making their way in that uh, setting. Como, what's your practice like in that frontline setting for metastatic disease? I think it's exactly the same as we've mentioned, unless there is endocrine resistant what? disease in the first line where we would want to try and look for a PI3K mutation, given that we now have approval for an AVA 120 regimen with the Navalisib, which only includes palbociclib currently, um, and because that's what was studied. I think unless it's that patient population, I'm also trying to reach out for ribociclib. Again, as Heather said, not because I don't believe in palbo anymore. The question is, why not ribo, given the consistent overall survival results that we've, you know, uh, seen across all the Mona Lisa programs. And we've also seen, you know, Natalie uh, showing benefits in the early stage as well. So I think unless there is a patient who really has a high QTC at baseline, which is very rare, it doesn't happen very often, but we have to keep an eye on that. And then LFTs can be a real issue that we can monitor for uh, and should be monitoring for anyway. And then Piggybagging on the question you had asked before, where would you start low? I think I completely agree. We would always start at the highest dose and then lower the dose because we've shown consistently that lowering the dose does not impact on efficacy. So we've seen those analyses with CDK4-6 inhibitors, which gives us that comfort. And the only place maybe potentially I could consider starting at a lower dose in the metastatic setting, if it's an elderly patient, where we've also seen and reported that grade three toxicities or severity of toxicities can be higher in an older patient population. So that's where maybe potentially I would consider starting them at a lower dose, which I do for other drugs as well, not just CDK4-6 inhibitors. But otherwise, I think we don't know which patient will have a side effect or not. And we can certainly dose reduce them. So in the metastatic setting, I still prefer starting everybody otherwise at the high dose or the, the optimal dose, I should say. So before we close, is your practice similar or anything to add that we might have left off here? No, I don't think, um, I don't, I think we are pretty much all aligned on this, even as a community, although maybe not in the wider community, because we see all sorts of things there. Right. I think we, you know, we generally um, believe that abemaciclib is also a very good drug, but it's harder to manage the diarrhea for most patients uh, in the metastatic setting in particular, where you're really trying to optimize the quality of life for a shortened expected length of life. And so really important. But the other things about ribociclib, I will say, I agree that in the older population, or maybe a patient, there's also other patients who just don't tolerate drugs, they're very suspicious of them. Sometimes we'll start at a lower dose because we say, look, we're individualizing it for you, you know, because some drugs better than none. So you, you have to work with the patient, I think, in that situation. But the other thing that really can bother the patients in metastatic disease is hair loss and fatigue. And we clearly see more of that at 600 than 400 of ribo. So if a patient does have those side effects, you don't have to wait for somebody to have grade four neutropenia. You know, I think you can dose reduce to try and optimize patient quality of life on how it affects patients in the non-measurable ways. Yeah. You can only benefit from a drug if you take it. Yes. Yes. Exactly.